Hey there, and welcome to the Whitwam Organics Weekly Garden Report. Today is Wednesday, August 19th. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what we are doing out in gardens right now around the Tampa Bay area. Um, I'm sure most of you know or can look at your calendars and tell that fall is right around the corner. You certainly would not know it by going outside. I know I have been sweating buckets lately. It is hot. Uh, August and September, in my opinion, are traditionally the hottest months of the year uh, in Tampa, uh, in Central Florida. But um, it, is, it is the time of year, I believe that it is super important that you're at least planning for and getting ready for your fall garden. If any of you new gardeners <clears throat> are watching, um, what I really mean by that is you don't wanna wait until it cools off and you feel like going outside. When it becomes gardening weather, you're probably too late for a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. There are some workarounds. You can uh, spend a little extra money and purchase seedlings of some stuff that maybe you, you could have started from seed uh, a little bit earlier. So Garden Report, some of the things that we are planting by seed right now are tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. So all of your nightshades. Um, we are also planting uh, melons and winter squash right now. Anything that is over 80 days, uh, 90 days uh, to, to begin to uh, get harvest from we are starting to uh, plant now. Anything that is a warm season vegetable, so something that uh, maybe takes 45 days or 60 days, you can wait a little while on those. Really, our goal is, and, and you'll see this is where, there's, where, where it's a little bit of a gamble, our goal is to have vegetable plants that are ready to begin producing, putting out flowers when the weather turns nice. So we have, just get this camera straightened out a little bit. So we have a little bit of a window. If this is your first uh, fall in Florida, um, we don't really know when it's gonna cool off. It can be anywhere from the last week of September to the first week of November. Average is usually about the second week of October. What do I mean by cool off? What I mean by cool off is that when you wake up in the morning to have coffee and you step outside, you don't want to turn around and immediately go back inside because you've already sweated through your shirt. That's what I mean by cool off. I'm not talking about when you're driving around Tampa and all the women have began putting their boots on. I'm not talking about that kind of cold weather. I'm talking about um, just basically going from the weather we're having right now, which is absolutely miserable, to something that is mildly comfortable. That's our fall weather. Um, the evening should cool off a little bit. Uh, you should definitely feel some uh, drop of humidity in the air. This is what we're looking for uh, for, for weather um, for our fall vegetables to be uh, happy and comfortable. Now, during our fall season, we're getting a lot of our winter vegetables started as well. So when it like really does cool off, where maybe you need a sweater in the morning, or um, you're maybe not thinking about wearing wearing sandals or flip-flops that day, at least not until the afternoon. Um, that's when we can actually begin getting some of our winter crops ready to go. And uh, that could and will be happening sometime during the fall. Um, so our fall garden really is a kind of a mishmash of our last planting of summer crops. So some plants that we've been growing all summer. If you um, had some and they kind of petered out, uh, you want to do another round. If you hadn't done some of these summer crops like Malabar spinach and okra, you still have time to get another round of those in. Um, and then also right now we are planting our long season fall crops. And then we're barely messing around with right now some of our extremely heat tolerant winter crops. Examples of those would be uh, winter crops that you possibly have seen grow through the summer. So collard greens, some kales, um, uh, Swiss chard, um, that's a little bit of a gamble. Really, I mean, if it stays uh, swelter sweltering uh, hot well into October, uh, there's a good potential of losing that stuff. But if it cools off the last week of September, you'll be way ahead of the game. So seeds are, are cheap. Um, time and space is not. 
So I don't mind wasting some seeds on some plants um, that I could potentially lose in a couple of weeks uh, due to um, uh, it's staying just way too hot. If that's going to get me ahead of the game, um, you know, to me, it's not that big of a deal if I lose some plants and we have to start over. So regardless of whether or not you're going to take chances on the winter vegetables, whether or not you're going to try and start some of your eggplants, tomatoes, and peppers by seed now, or put seedlings in later because it's just way too hot, it's still time for you to start thinking about your fall garden. Um, if you had your garden covered up all summer, it's time to go get it uncovered. If your garden is been neglected and filled with weeds, uh, time to get those weeds pulled out. It's a really good idea to have a few weeks of wiggle room uh, where you can go ahead and water that soil and expose it to uh, the air and give any weed seeds that might be in there a chance to germinate so you can pull them out before you have a whole nother round of new crops planted in there. It's time to start adding uh, fresh organic matter or garden soil. Uh, turning that soil. But bottom line is, is right now, even though it doesn't feel like fall outside, it is still time to start getting ready for our fall gardens. Okay, so that's your weekly week garden report. Um, the rest of our show, I'm super excited. Uh, I have a, a very good friend of mine and somebody I had the pleasure of meeting a few years back. Um, she is uh, Erica Nelson. She is in charge of the Harvest Hope Park at the University Area Development uh, Center in um, over by in the USF area. Um, we work on the community garden there um, together and she's doing some exciting things in the community. And let's see, without further ado, let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, yeah. hey Erica. Hey there, how's it going? It's going really well. I'm it's I'm glad you're here. Um, so tell us a little bit about what um, kind of I guess how we met, um, what what you walked into, uh, what you saw, and then we can kind of get into what it's become, because that's the exciting part, really. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. So uh, as you mentioned, I'm the director of our Harvest Hope Park, which is a seven acre park over by the USF Tampa campus. Um, and that belongs to the University Area CDC, which is a community development corporation that's really looking to revitalize the entire area, um, the university area. So yes, hey, Sean, good to see you. Um, Sean's one of our volunteers and he gets to experience the garden with us too. So when I first started working there, I heard there was a community garden. Um, and I had never tried that before. Um, I'm a yoga teacher. I teach meditation, mindfulness. I eat as healthy as I can, um, but I've never gardened per se. So I said, you know, let me give this a shot and see what it's all about. And that's when I got to meet David and he is a plant mad scientist, right? That's what I say. He's the, he's the mad scientist of the plant. So, uh, so David's the plant person and I'm the people person. So now um, we've built such a great relationship. I'm actually the chair of the garden uh, for the last two years. And what David really taught me was the importance of having a structure. So having that point person, that dependable person who is always going to be consistent. Uh, we work at the, you know, at the Harvest Hope Park and we grow food, not only for the community residents to fight um, the uh, social determinants of health in that area, but we actually, the number one intent is to teach residents how to grow their own food. So not only do we give free access to healthy organic food in a food desert, but we wanna teach people, you don't, you don't even need to go to the grocery store. You can just walk in your backyard and actually pick your meal, which is so much more rewarding. My appreciation for food is, has done a complete uh, 360 turn because it is just amazing just what it takes to actually grow a tomato grow an eggplant, and then it starts getting you think to think, you know, how did everything from the store get in the store, and how many trucks did it get on, and how far, where did it come from, how far away did it have to travel, um, when was it picked, but I can actually pick something from the garden and just just cook it, and it's just amazing. It's um, Now it's turned into more of a culinary experience where I like to kind of plate my food, and yeah, we work with residents, and we, we teach them how to garden, we give them food, and now we're starting to get into more like cooking classes because uh, the number one thing when we give out food, they go, well, what do I do with this? We're like, well, saute it, put some garlic on there. Uh, it's delicious. And um, so now we're actually starting to do some cooking demos once a month with a partnership with the, uh, the VA Whole Health Program. And 
and yeah, we've really grown a lot in the last two or three years. And um, the community really likes the garden as well. And David. <laughs> so, um, Erica, what was what was the biggest, I guess, surprise shock to you about um, being in charge of of a community of a community garden like that? Definitely. Um, how do you get volunteers? Because it is a lot to upkeep. <laughs> um, so, kind of two things: volunteer, and then I wanted to prove to people that gardening it's it's so much fun. But it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go into that. So um, I did data. I also do data management. So I wanted to put some numbers and some data behind the actual impact that we were making in the community. So we started counting how much food we harvested, how many volunteers we engaged, how many families uh, took home food, how many events we had. Um, just as many numbers as we could count. So then we could demonstrate. Uh, and, you know, in 2018, we gave over 1,700 pounds of food out to community residents and also gave them the education on how to, you know, cook it healthy and uh, kind of celebrate organic vegetables and make vegetables fun in the household rather than rather than a drag. But uh, definitely getting some some metrics behind that. And then uh, how do you retain volunteers? Because, um, you know, if they don't have fun, they're not going to come back. It's free labor. So I wanted to make sure that people had a fun experience. And now <laughs> it is a party every single Friday morning. Everyone from the community comes out. We play music. We know each other. We greet new people. And that's the great dynamic about what we do is we have, you know, business people with residents looking for jobs and they get to be next to each other and have a conversation and say, you know, what? I might have the perfect opportunity for you. Um, and then it becomes so much more than a community garden. It becomes a, a place of opportunity. Yes, well, it can. So Erica, um, you said something, uh, and I just, you know, I want to say, I want to say this out loud because I know a lot of people have been thinking it. So I, I, I want to make sure that we're shifting and emphasizing on, uh, on the importance here. So you said 1700 pounds of food, which now to those who are watching, um, by the way, thank you everybody who's watching and joining us live. Uh, make sure that you go ahead and shoot your questions over to us um, as we're going. Don't just wait till right at the end uh, so we can have time to review them. But anyway, back to uh, the food, the 1,700 pounds of food. Um, for the amount of work, I mean, I work with you on that garden and I have to be honest, for the amount of work and people and labor and probably money that we put it, the 1,700 pounds of food is really not that impressive. Not for your garden and I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything you don't already know and I don't want people to kind of start figuring this stuff out and be like, wow, that actually doesn't sound that amazing. Um, so if, you know, the money that is spent on the garden and the time that is spent on the garden, I mean, if we could go get 1,700 pounds of food uh, without blinking and distribute it to the community, really, what's the importance of us doing it through the community garden uh, projects? Like, what 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 are we doing out there if uh, 1,700 pounds of food really isn't isn't that much food in the grand scheme of things? Definitely, and kind of how I mentioned before. The number one goal of this specific community garden is to teach residents how to grow their own food. I say we have we love engaging volunteers. I think volunteer engagement is more of a success metrics because that's as many people as we could educate um, on gardening. And I always say the food is just a byproduct. The food is just a reward of, of the education yeah. and the experience. Um, so, so yes, and then you, you compare that to market value of organic vegetables, and I always uh, really try to stress the importance of it's hard to keep things organic from the wood to the soil to the fertilizer to the plants. Um, so I'm definitely proud that we maintain our organic garden as well. And then just to answer Scott's question really quick, um, we have, if you go to www.uacdc.org, go to Harvest Hope Park, you'll see the community garden there and you can sign up for volunteering online. We're there every single Friday, rain or shine, 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, we're going to start re-engaging with volunteers in August and we're, um, as David mentioned in the garden report, uh, we're planting now. So we're gonna have some fun in the upcoming months. Yeah, we so next yeah next Friday, um, not this Friday, but next Friday we're gonna have a pretty major planting day, and it should be fun. Um, we got we're gonna um, yeah we've been spending the past couple weeks just getting the garden ready, uh, making sure that it's weed free, repairing irrigation, turning the soil, 
uh, pretty much doing everything that I talked about in the very beginning so that we can go ahead and get some of this stuff planted. Um, just to recap to the weekly garden report this next Friday, and I'm directly talking to you, Erica, right now, this, this next, not this Friday, next Friday, we're not planting everything. <laughs> we're probably going to plant like maybe half or three quarters of the garden because we really want to save room for yellow squash and zucchini and kale and lettuce and spinach. We don't want to fill it all up with tomatoes, peppers, eggplants and not have room. So, you know, it's kind of a phased planting is what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. But now, Erica, you mentioned uh, volunteers and getting people in that garden um, space. Have you guys done anything else in in this space? Like do you, back before the pandemic, did you guys um, have any other events or classes uh, or things like yoga in the garden um, that uh, or in the in the park? Or is, is there plans for more of that in, and using that as a community space? I know that the garden is smack in the middle of Harvest Hope Park which uh, we could we could do a whole nother show on the park and what UACDC and the park is doing uh, for the community, but we're trying to keep it on the garden right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, tell me about classes and stuff that you guys have done in there. Definitely. So, uh, so the Harvest Hope Garden was created in 2013 uh, when the UACDC bought a vacant uh, lot, just seven acres. And the first thing they did was put a community garden right in the middle of it um, just to activate the site, just to let the community start to get excited about um, the development that's uh, about to happen. So for the last two years, two and a half years, um, I oversaw a federal construction grant where we were actually able to construct the seven acre park that now has a football field, a playground, a fishing dock, adult exercise equipment, walking trails, the community garden, a teaching classroom. So uh, that really just opened in November uh, 21st, 2019. So we're still kind of fresh because of uh, the closed COVID uh, closure. So we're still kind of getting into back into the groove of the park being completely open, but in that time, we were able to develop many, many partnerships. Um, we are actually sponsored by the Tampa General Hospital, um, as well as the VA supports us with um, offering free cooking classes. They're a dietetic um, nutritionists. They come out and they do uh, monthly cooking classes. We've also worked as um, like gardening as therapy, so garden agrotherapy. Uh, and we also uh, celebrate our volunteers. So we have volunteer events where we cook for them. We have a meal in the garden. And we also have meditations in the back area that we've been working on with some Florida friendly landscaping. And it's really just a community gathering place. Um, also, we've partnered with the local schools, um, elementary and middle schools, so they can come out and experience a community garden and kind of learn, um, you know, what, what's out there and, and get it. It, it, that experience of going to a garden because I had never been in a garden before and I'm not gonna lie I was a little intimidated but me being able to be a complete newbie kind of how you were saying in the garden report the new gardeners you know I no expert by any means but it helps me get that starting point so when I meet a resident and they say I don't know how to garden I'm like perfect me neither me neither me neither <laughs> We yeah. learn something every single day, and then two years later, I can actually teach a thing or two. But that's why you're so valuable, David, because you know, okay, we're going to save these couple plots. For it's the not about, it's all. Did it lag on you? <laughs> yeah, there was a little lag there. That's okay. No worries. Um, but uh, it, yeah, you don't have to know what you're doing. You just have to know a little bit more than the person that you're talking to. <laughs> so, you know, it's it is it is just about and and actually what's become uh, the most enjoyable thing for me in the garden space is telling some of those volunteers who've been back over and over and over again, um, like, hey, now you are in charge of how we harvest these broccoli plants, um, you know, and just kind of, uh, hey, now you are in charge of how we harvest these green beans so oh, yeah. when we have new volunteers um, we're gonna we're gonna send them your way and we get the volunteers teaching the volunteers how to do the things in the garden and that, that's when I really feel like uh, things are beginning to get traction and and take hold and actually go somewhere is when we see volunteers teaching volunteers the stuff that we taught them 
<laughs> it's it's really becoming what we what we want to see it uh, become. Um, but you had mentioned something I want you to jump back to real quick because um, I know I was super excited about it and it kind of started started gaining speed right when uh, we kind of went on lockdown. And that was with the veterans uh, that were coming in um, and, and doing the garden. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, and let's just pretend for a second that the pandemic is not here. Um, what are the plans for the future and for continuing that engagement? Definitely. So you have to take initiative. And I figured the VA hospital is right down the street from where we work. And I really think that they would benefit from being able to have this experience of going outside, integrating back into the community and, um, you know, just having having a role again. So what I did was I looked up the whole health program through the VA website and they had this beautiful little chart and it was, you know, the veteran integrating back into the community. So I just picked up the phone. I called him one day. I said, hey, we're the community. You're looking for, you know, the community partnerships. And we would love to bring you out to the garden, give you a tour and just think of some ideas and ways to brainstorm. And, um, and it ended up being a beautiful partnership where the their dietetic interns with their whole health program, uh, they actually teach the cooking classes. But not only do they teach you how to cook, they teach you about all the nutritional benefits. And that's a big thing that I've learned with the garden as well is that um, you try to give someone kale and they're like, I don't like kale. But then you say all of the health benefits that it comes from, it helps reduce your cholesterol. It can help with weight loss and just all of, all of the benefits that come with that. And then they take all the kale. They come back every single week. David, remember um, Twiggy? She would come and uh, she'd take all the Swiss chard. Yeah. Uh, we told her all the health benefits. We cooked it for her. And every single Friday she would come and just clear out the Swiss chard. And I thought just thought that was amazing. I thought that was so cool. It's it really is amazing. Um, and teaching folks uh, the different uh, and new recipes and even just ways to handle the food and recognize the food and and uh, and, and you know, the fact that there's more than one way to cook certain foods. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's amazing how much we can grow in a small space. Um, but what never ceases to amaze me is is how uh, many people just haven't been exposed to these types of foods. Mm -hmm. um, and also just even how either they're not readily available at the grocery store um, or they're super expensive at the grocery store. But these are vegetables that somebody could even just, you know, draw out a small space in their yard or even just get a couple pots uh, and plant them. Because a lot of these are cut, what we call cut and come again vegetables like kale, where you're just breaking the leaves off the plant and the plants just continue to produce. So, you know, we're not talking about vegetables that really take up a whole lot of space, but their health benefits, you know, compared to their their cost at the at the grocery store, I think are um, they're definitely that's you know, Erica, I'm sure you clued in a while ago. That's why we're growing that stuff in the garden. Is uh, you know, it's just if it's easy for us and it's easy for our volunteers, it's going to be easy for people to do at home. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that to me, it's just a super exciting uh, to see somebody try a new vegetable and then come back week after week after week and we just can't even have enough of it anymore so definitely the good news is i think this year this year we're gonna be what like two or three years ago we planted like this much swiss chard and then last year we doubled it yep and then i think this year we're probably gonna need to double it again what do you think i think so and i like the different variations like the flamingo and then you have the yellow kind and the red kind so then you can kind of have this beautiful um you know colorful Arrangement, arrangement as well. And I have one more thing about the veterans too, which kind of goes with Sean's question about some of the most heartwarming stories. Um, so if I could share just real quick, uh, I kind of hit on the, the whole health program, but gardening is really therapeutic. That's what I learned. Like I love touching the dirt, um, just really connecting with your food. It's, um, it's hard to explain, but it's definitely therapeutic. So I started looking into agritherapy and uh, wanted to definitely um, offer as like a mental health experience too. So the project that we were working on before we were shut down on quarantine, which is what I think you were trying to allude to, David, um, was our partnership with their psychosocial rehab center. So these are um, individuals who are experiencing severe trauma. 
And we have developed a program where they will come to the garden and volunteer with us, uh, more of an agrotherapy. So definitely whatever their ability level is, but more so just getting outside, talking to other people, um, feeling comfortable in their community and ending it with a photo voice project. So at the end of their 10 weeks of volunteering with us, they will um, turn it into an art project and they'll take a picture of the thing that they resonated with most during the 10 weeks of their experience and um, kind of create maybe a little poem, maybe they write however they want the text version to be, but to connect in a meaningful way to the garden. Um, and we kind of tested this in the past and, one, and uh, some of the volunteers they talked about, they never came out of their house before. Um, they were just in such a deep depression, they couldn't even think about tomorrow. Um, and then at the end of the garden, um, the one that really touched me was she took a picture of a sign in the garden. It said, <clears throat> gardening is a work of heart. And this recovering veteran talked about how recovery is a work of heart. Like you really have to put in every single day and believe in tomorrow. It's just like planting a seed and nourishing it, nourishing yourself um, and believing that it, that it might bloom tomorrow. And that was that was really um, touching just to see how gardening can really help people recover um, or at least cope with with trauma and, and mental illness as well. And I know it's had um, a great, great effect on me just being able to get outside and connect with nature because, I mean, that's that's our truth. Um, and yeah, there's just so many heartwarming stories from people getting married in the garden to the kids, just all their hugs and um, just being able to feed children who are hungry um, every day is, a, is an amazing experience. And I see David froze a little bit or you're just smiling at me. <laughs> you kicked me out, David. Hey, Erica, I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> I can hear you. You froze on me. I'm just going to have to take over your show now. Erica, can you hear me? I can. Okay, so my phone overheated, and that's what was running my camera. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to totally take over my show now, so I'm on my laptop. Uh, I've which got this. Its camera is absolutely atrocious, but I at least have a, a decent microphone. We have about three minutes left. Let's blast through some of these questions. Um, and let's see, I'm going to kind of roll up to the top. Um, we covered that. That Scott hit it on the head earlier. Did you see that, Erica, where he said wait, weeding can be therapeutic? Yeah, you did. did. Good job, Scott. Yeah, he, did. he hit it right on the head. Um, put that in on my website. Okay, so Scott's asking, uh, how how do we become a volunteer at the garden? Definitely go to um, uacdc.org, and all of the information on, is there from the address to the days and times that we're volunteering um, to uh, frequently asked questions. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is distracted by a squirrel at the moment. So, okay. And then let's see here. Um, do we have any plans? I think you and I have talked about this. Do we have any plans for wheelchair height access raised beds for the disabled veterans? Now, we did have the, the raised beds, um, but the problem is we need some type of walkway to get to it because the beds are in grass. Um, but we definitely would be interested in doing some raised beds. I was thinking about one right up the middle or maybe uh, over there uh, right next to the... Um, next to the concrete mm -hmm. yeah no we, yeah we definitely um need that okay so christopher asked uh erica are we focused on annuals um or vegetables only we do it all we do it all um we mostly focus on annual vegetable gardening but we yes yes and but we've gotten into uh, more perennial flowers and uh, with florida friendly landscaping so 
the garden is kind of in two sections. We have a 33 bed organic vegetable garden, which is um, annual. We actually switched out every season. And then we have a back area, which is more of um, permaculture with uh, Florida friendly landscaping. We have some cherry trees and blueberry bushes uh, and mango, a mango tree. We have two mango trees. Um, so we're kind of getting into permaculture in the back and, and learning as we go, but mostly uh, vegetables uh, for the community to, to eat. Awesome. I see some questions on fruit trees. Um, David, do you want to take the fruit tree and kind of what we started doing with that? Okay, so we are doing this really cool thing, how I mentioned the landscape demonstration garden in, in the back. So we're mixing um, landscaping with fruit trees. We have a small or orchard but it's just not taking off like we wanted, like we hoped it would. Um, but we're actually doing um, like a circle. Well, I know it's a square, but we're kind of um, have two plots here and two plots here to create a circle in the middle, which is just this meditation area. And we um, plant penta flowers. We plant uh, mango trees with it, cherry trees, blueberry bushes, lantanas, um, flax lilies. And we kind of integrate it into this a beautiful like landscape architect area, which is just super peaceful. You can bring a book and read and drink some tea and um, just enjoy life for a moment. Those are sterile lantanas. I just like to point out to everybody who's uh, who's paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, I don't know if you knew this, Erica, but there's a type of lantana or a couple of types that are class one invasive here in Florida. So, okay, so if I have a question. Are lantanas poisonous to animals? Slash dogs. They can be, yeah, yeah, yes, they are. Yep, yep. And, uh, that's why David's so valuable because I can just call him and ask him any question. Um, so yeah. when you work with David, he's such a great resource. Um, not only are his plants amazing, I mean, people are like, how did you get them this big? Um, but you can ask him any question. If a leaf is turning yellow or there's holes in it, he knows exactly where to go find uh, the critters. So, so uh, everybody's yeah. jumping in here with questions. We've gone over. <laughs> a little bit in time um so we'll go ahead and uh plow through these last few right now but we are over a little bit trying to keep these down to 30 minutes um i mean maybe they'll go longer if you guys want them longer but um so um let's see we already talked about the fruit trees uh we're not scott we're not getting wood chip drop-offs um at the time we're really not um, doing that type of growing. We might in the back where Erica was talking about um, the orchard that isn't really taking off. I've got some plans back there right now. We're just, um, because the whole park was just finished and a lot of uh, uh, drainage was taken into consideration down to the pond, I just want to make sure that whatever we're doing in that back corner is not going to exacerbate already existing drainage issues. In fact, I want to make sure that anything we're planning on doing will help with some of the drainage issues um, because we basically don't want to build a huge dam uh, to an area. And I think he got cut off. But if you're here with me, I really appreciate you for tuning in today and just giving us your time and um, if you have any questions, uh, let us know. I see that Dan asked, uh, do you have irrigation or is it just natural water? That is an amazing question. Irrigation is the magical secret. So if you plant and you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to water it every day. Just get irrigation and make your life easy. Um, we have irrigation set on timers. So we have different time, time zones. And uh, it just makes life so much easier because you'll come the next day, everything will already be watered and your plants will be growing and then you can just focus on maintaining them. Uh, so irrigation, great question. Yes, do irrigation. Um, David can help you with that. It's on his website. So I see that Scott would like to bring me some goat poop when he volunteers. <laughs> Um, so I'm still evaluating that aspect of gardening between the goat and the chicken uh, poop inquiries I get. So I will get back to you, Scott. Um, but fun fact, I'm actually the, the yoga teacher for Goat Yoga Tampa. So we have uh, six goats of our own. So we're goat people. David, you back with us? I think. <laughs> We've been on quite a ride for anyone who joined in. I hope you're entertained. 
Oh, oh it's been a mess. <laughs> um, I'm looking at your thumb and I'm hearing an echo into the abyss. Yeah, yeah. there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm having some crazy Wi Fi issues out here. Um, thank you, everybody who joined us. Wow. I'm getting a lot of feedback. <laughs> Because you're by your computer that also has the audio on, but I know I'm trying to get far away from it because when I tried to turn it off, it like really went haywire. Oh, I love it. Thank I know. You. So, Thank everybody um, who would like to join us uh, next week, it's at 5 30. If you can't join us, please uh, send us an email to info at witwomorganics.com with your topic suggestions or with your questions, and we will cover them uh, while we're live, and you can go back and watch it later on. Um, so join us next week at 5.30 on YouTube or on Facebook Live. You can participate uh, off of either platform. Erica, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed this, and I look forward to us doing it again very soon. Everybody have a safe and wonderful evening and happy gardening. Happy gardening. Thank you.